And as we take up the offering, let's stand and let's lift our eyes to the maker of heaven and earth. I lift my eyes unto the hills, to where my help is from. My help comes from Adonai. Hallelujah. I lift my eyes. I lift my eyes unto the hills, to where my help is from. Yeshua, Yeshua, Moshia, Moshia, Yeshua, Yeshua, Moshia, Moshia, Moshia. Hine lo, hine lo yanu, velo yishan, shomer Yisrael. Yeshua, Yeshua, Moshia, Moshia. Lift up the name of Yeshua. Yeshua, Yeshua, Moshia, Moshia. Yeshua, Yeshua, Moshia, Moshia. Yeshua, Yeshua, Moshia, Moshia. Moshia. I lift my eyes unto the hills to where my help is from. My help comes from Adonai. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Thank you that our help comes from you who has made the heavens and the earth. Amen. Are you first? Okay, Janet, come on up. We're, uh, we wanted to, um, we were just at the IMCS Rabbis, Rabbis and Leaders Conference. Ari came with us this year. And, um, you know, what we did is we laid out at the pool all day and had a tan, swam, and ate, and uh, had a good time together. I mean, everyone thinks Orlando, that's what... But really, it's not like that at all. It's, uh, it's quite busy. As a matter of fact, for me, it was even busier because on Friday, I received a call from Rabbi David Chernoff, who said, I have COVID, I'm not coming. Can you speak for me on Tuesday night? Now, I still was finishing the Shabbat message last week, finishing up this major teaching I was doing on Monday there. And, but God was gracious, and so it was a, a little busy. And David, earlier on, heard that Ari was coming, said, I want a young guy speaking before me on, on Tuesday night. So Ari not only went, but he spoke. And so I thought he'd share his impressions. Yeah. Um, I won't really talk about my message, but I'll talk about uh, just the week spending time with uh, some of the leaders of our movement. Um, and I was trying to, because I like patterns, I was trying to kind of find what the common denominator is with all these <laughs> leaders and rabbis and worship leaders, every, just leaders in the ministry. And uh, there's introverts, there's extroverts, there's analytical, there's uh, outgoing and communicative types. So uh, there's no common things in personality, but uh, there's one thing that I found common in leaders, other than faith, but all, faith is for everyone in the body. Uh, the one thing that all the leaders that I talked to had was humility. And I think that, I told that to the worship leader who's a good friend of mine, Augustine. I said, these are guys are all so humble. And he said, yeah, the ones that aren't humble don't make it this long. Like, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, they don't. So 
these are the guys that have been laboring for decades in the movement, and humility is the thing that I think has caused them to endure. So, yeah, that was really encouraging. Also, since Debbie wasn't able to make it, she usually leads the women's meeting. That fell to Janet to suddenly have to pull together a women's meeting. So Janet, share about your conference. That was a big deal. <laughs> I really appreciate prayers. I know everyone prayed because uh, I'm usually her sidekick, you know, which is easy. But uh, I asked a lot of you to pray, and the women's meeting went really well. It was a, I was very thankful to the Lord for that. Uh, you know, it was really exciting to me to see uh, so many Messianic Jewish leaders really getting behind Israel, obviously, and some of the ministries that are behind Israel in a very practical way. Uh, there's one ministry that is supplying uh, bulletproof vests for the soldiers that don't have them, and uh, Joseph Project uh, is really going full force. The very, I think one of the first two days of the war, the warehouse of the government in Ash Ashkelon was bombed. And it just put them out for all of the distribution of goods. And the Joseph Project was able to move in and, and distribute to a lot of them. Um, so that was very encouraging to me. Um, and one other thing that, uh, it was really fun to have Jeff and Ari speaking together, it was Foreman Tuesday. <laughs> we got a lot of jokes out of that one. <laughs> but but um, Jonathan Kahn, um, well, the, the theme of the conference was from Revelation 12:6. Uh, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And of course, Jonathan didn't know about this before he came, but of course, his message was on that. And he spoke about just the need for really having increased spiritual strength in the upcoming days, uh, need the intensity of spiritual warfare, which when we look around at what's happening in the world, uh, we see that. And, and that's what he spoke about. And it really kind of hit me that we need, as Jeff always says, an army that find, or a family that finds itself at war and the need to really rise up and increased spiritual warfare and prayer. But it was a great time, and I, again, I really appreciate your prayers, because uh, I wasn't expecting <laughs> to be leading that session. Okay, and then, you know, it's great to be with colleagues. The IMCS is a, an organization of affiliated congregations and rabbis. So there's about 120 Messianic congregations worldwide that affiliate. There were about 200 people there uh, at the conference. Very strong teaching. The worship team from Houston really put, put it over the top. They did an outstanding job. Um, you know, many of the sessions were very good. Uh, Jonathan Kahn hit another, you know, basically I have, I have it on video. I have a number of them on, all of them on video. We may show some of them over the next couple of weeks, uh, maybe Jonathan Kahn's message. Um, but as Janet said, you know, what he basically said, you know, of course, we, we've been pressing in on this, that we're a battleship congregation. That's our vision. So we do have that. But he said, you know, the IDF is fighting a ground war in Israel. We are the spiritual IDF, is basically what he said. And we need to rise up and take our place in the spiritual realm, in prayer, positional authority, and you know, putting all of our weight into it. So that was a confirmation to me that our vision of mission first, people always, battleship congregation, a family congregation, but a family that finds itself at war. You know, this is the balance, this is the vision. So really a strong confirmation to me. And, uh, and that was the conference in a nutshell. All right, so why don't we stand? We're gonna have one more song, and then Michael Buchan is gonna come and share the word of the Lord. I'll come back when he's done, and we'll have some prayer. 
So, Lord, as we begin this, I just want to pray. Stretch out your hands towards Michael, please. And there's Michael right behind him. So, And there's Michael right here. So, Lord, we pray for Michael as he shares the word of the Lord. Give him grace. Give him fluency in the spirit here. In Yeshua's name, Lord, give us, as Ari said, we need to be humble and have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying in Yeshua's name. I will sing, I will sing your praises in the morning and at night. To you, the holy God, creator of all souls. All malachim, all people and all beasts, all creatures on the earth and Praises in the morning and at night To you the holy God, creator of all souls All malachim, all people and all beasts All creatures on the earth and in the sky master of the world You are sovereign, ruler above all Your mighty deeds and your wonders we declare It's beautiful to sing before your name Shabbat Shalom, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for this great worship team. Let's give them a word. Hallelujah. Woo! It's so great to worship God here on the first day. Not the first day, but the first service of the year. And you know, it's just like 365 days of 2023 went fast. And it's over, right? <laughs> we have actually here the great uh, time when we praise and worship Lord and I also prepared some words and didn't have even a chance to share it <laughs> because it was like, it was a floor of the Spirit. It was an amazing time. Thank you, everyone, who joined us. It was a really great time. And now we're getting ready to open the new page in our life, right? 2024, it's the first day, I mean, first service. And usually what people do when New Year's stuff, they just start to plan, right, for the new, future, exciting things that you're planning to do. And sometimes you do it, sometimes not exactly it's happened. But anyway, it's fresh start, right? And today I want to talk about one of the interesting, kind of like a fascinating topic. At least I find it fascinating. It's about the time and seasons. It's kind of like New Year's anyway, right? And you know what? Uh, all this world is operate on time, right? We have all kind of like a fancy time devices. This is mine, just to make sure I'm not going crazy. <laughs> By the way, Rabbi Jeff allowed me to go for four hours. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm on the clock here. You know that by now, right? <laughs> 
And you know what's really I find interesting about the time? That there's a no clear definition on time found anywhere. We have time, we have device to manage, everyone operating time, my time at work, it's, time is everywhere, it's everything. But there's no clear definition. The clearest I was able to find, it was the time is a continuing sequence of existing and events that occur in apparently irreversible succession from the past through the present to the future. And yes, sorry for you time travelers, traveling back and forth not exactly possible. <laughs> I like this uh, literature and fantasy, but it's not exactly how it all works. And this is, by the way, just to scratch the surface, because if we start to ask the different people about what time is mean, you hear all kind of answers. Scientists, philosophers, all kind of like religious uh, geniuses have their own idea how time operates. Is it linear or it's circle? Is it sequential or it's not? All kind of things. Like, you really will do yourself a favor if you go into Wikipedia or Britannic and, and read about time. It's fascinating, absolutely fascinating subject. But it's getting really confused. And the Greek language, actually, I find it's really good. It uh, denotes the two principles of time. It's basically, in English and many other languages, we have one word, they have a two. And one of them, chronos, and another one, kairos. Chronos is mean like numeric chronological time. It's like a device that just basically counting the time. When kairos is the right opportunity or moment, and probably the very good English word serendipity. I just recently learned it. <laughs> <laughs> Being in New York is a very fancy cafe. Thank you, Michael and Stacy. <laughs> it's called serendipity. <laughs> And it's, we can translate it like a happy, unexpected occurrence, when something happens, right? And it's not really quantitative, it's qualitative. And Greeks actually get pretty good. And you know what, um, usually what I do when time, it's kind of like Different people measure time differently. This is another interesting thing that I want to share. Like, for instance, men and women. Like, for me, 7 p.m., it means 7 p.m. But, for instance, for my wife, it could be continuum between 6.30, 7.30, and so on and so forth, right? <laughs> it's actually getting even more interesting when we check the different cultures, right? Like, for instance, if you like Latino culture as much as I do, or Israeli culture, we have a word, Manana, Omahar Baboker, right? <laughs> Anyone knows how to translate word manana? Uh, you get close, but not exactly. You know, when we travel in Central America in Panama, they give us a very good explanation, translation of the word manana. It's not today. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it's maybe tomorrow, maybe in a week, maybe in a month, maybe next year, maybe never. But definitely not today. <laughs> I find it absolutely fascinating, you know? <laughs> Basically, just to summarize all this confusion about this topic, I hope I confuse you completely at this point. We have subject of time, but we have no definition. We know it's real, it exists, we can measure it, but we cannot define it in any term. We cannot understand. We cannot put our finger on it what it is. We can measure it, but we do not know the nature of it. And you know what? Every time I get into a confusing situation, what I do, and Sam, I hope you do the same, we just go into the Word of God and see what God wants to say about this very confusing topic. And boy, he did. You know, the word time and different type of seasons mentioned in the Bible well over 800 times. It means it's something significant that God wants us to understand and operate. And God who created this universe and everything we can see or not can see, he knows better, right? And let's explore what he really wants to say to us. And although the God created time and space, and they're definitely connected, but he himself operate outside of it. It's almost like he created this world for us and he sees us through, but himself, he is 
in a different reality called eternity. And the first really interesting thing I want us to know that eternity, it's not long time. It's not very long, 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 long time. It's absence of time, exactly. <laughs> time is something that he created and he looked from outside on it. And you know, when we start to understand this continuum, we can see the story of Noah in a different way. Like, for instance, how long it took Noah to build the ark? We, we don't know exactly. <laughs> it was a very long time, right? There was no today technology, everything was like man-made, handicraft, custom-built, right? <laughs> but, but you know what's interesting? God was not in a rush. He just looked from the other place, from the eternity, and when Noah was ready, bam, this is when flood has come. The exact moment, because God is not bound by time or space. And you know, Sometimes it's work the same with our families. God wants to see when we are ready. And we are ready, boom. This Kairos serendipity moment come in place in our lives, right? He opened the heaven and this flood of opportunities coming in. And you know what God showed us? That there's a different type of times. There's a good times and there's a bad times, right? And God warned us in advance. He tell us, look, life may be very good right now, but be aware, there's a bad time. It's coming. And it's not the question when they come. It's a question, not, not, not a question that if they come. It's a question when they come. And you know what's interesting? Through the Bible, we can see that there's a people and a whole nations that ones that recognize time and understand it, and ones that do not. And there's a people actually in Israel, uh, there was whole tribe. Uh, it was tribe of Issachar. It's the first Chronicle 12, verse 32. It says, the son of Issachar, who had the understanding of the times. And what it means, this understanding? It means they know what Israel ought to do how it would be convenient in our family to have somebody like that, right? Usually it's my wife. She always knows what to do. <laughs> so, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, let's look at a few examples, kind of like a good example and bad example. And King Saul, it's usually is a very good, bad example, right? Let's read 1 Samuel uh, 13, verse 8, 11, and 13. You all know the story. He just became the king, very powerful. He just leading the battles of Israel. Samuel told him, like, just wait, gather the troops, wait a little bit, I'll come and bring the sacrifice, and uh, you're going to the battle, and you're going to win, and see what happens. Then he waited seven days, so according to the time of the Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal. Something happened. Something was not right with timing, at least how the soul see it. And the people were scattered for him. So Saul says, bring a burnt offering and peace offering here to me. And they offered the burnt offering. Now it's happened. As soon as he finished presenting the burnt offering, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him, and he might greet him. And Samuel said, what have you done? And Samuel said to him, you have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandments of the Lord, your God, which he commanded you. For now the Lord would have established your kingdom over the Israel for forever. And see, in this case, it's kind of like, it's so, it's so silly. It's so foolish. Right? He, what, how long he needs to wait? Maybe another 10 minutes? Maybe another 15 minutes? Maybe another hour? What's going to happen in this hour? Nothing. But he was in a rush. He did not recognize this timing of the Lord. And he lost his blessing. He lost his kingdom. And he lost his life as a result of these events. Right? It was really very dramatic. And look in another example. As I say, there's a bad example, a good bad example. And there's a really good, good example. 
And uh, who may think would be a good example of the patient man? Jo Joseph, right, right. There's, a, there's a many, actually. There's a Job, there's a Abraham. He waited. God help him. But Joseph was one of the most fascinating person, And uh, kind of like a pre-incarnation of Yeshua, like an image of Yeshua, right? And what a different story it was, the uh, story of Joseph. Let's read the Genesis 37 uh, to 50. Actually, you know what? Um, yeah, let's I tell you the story. Because if you're going to read it, we'll never finish it today. It will be long. And basically... <clears throat> That Joseph, it was the most beloved son of Jacob. You know that, right? He made him fancy coat, fancy tunic. He loved him a, a lot and probably caused his brothers to be a little bit envy over that. And he saw the great dreams about his future when uh, everyone bowed down to him, stars and moon and sun and chiefs uh, uh, bowed down to him. And as you remember, it's not exactly at him popularity among his brothers. <laughs> Even his dad says, like, Joseph, you need to be calmed down a little bit. Humble yourself. Like, uh, <laughs> Ari says, humble yourself. Just cool down. Just go with the floor. But you know what? Joseph, it is who he is. And one day, it really do not end up very well with him. His brothers basically say he sell, sell him to the slavery, to the land of Egypt. And uh, nevertheless, he get in a Potiphar house. He start to raise to the rank of the corporate life and eventually become chief leader on the Potiphar house. Not bad, eh? For the slave, not bad. But <laughs> then he met a Potiphar wife. And he was a very handsome boy. And we know what's happened there. Uh, she pretended that he tried to rape her, and he back to the prison again. It was bad enough to be enslaved for him. Now he's in prison. And I make a wild guess that prisons in Egypt was not exactly as we have it here in Canada. We have it pretty bad here, right? I, I think. I've never been, but yeah. I, I think it is. <laughs> but in Egypt, it was horrible. But again, God is with him. Things start to get better. He gets acquainted with a very two highly positioned people. One of them was a butler, and another one was a person who provided bread for their baker, for the pharaoh. And life, there's a glimpse of hope again. And uh, he prophesied their dream. He told everything correctly, did everything right. They went away and gone. Two more years he spent there. <laughs> Can you imagine what he experienced during this time? I, I, I think that David just catch it as a glimpse in a Psalm 105, verse 18. And I read it from Derby trans translation. It's, it's showing exactly word to word what uh, Joseph experienced. They afflicted his feet with fetters. His soul come into the irons. It's not just he have a chains around his neck and feet and uh, arms. His soul went into the iron. It was that bad. But nevertheless, Joseph never lose hope. And you know why? Because he see this vision, this dreams. He remember that God gave him these dreams. And he understand that nothing, even this, his current situation, able to change future that God prepared for him. Can you imagine? He celebrated 14th, 1-4th, 1-3, 14th, I believe, New Year's Eve in a prison. It's very sad. <laughs> but still, he did not lose this hope. He remembered this promise. And this is why Bible tells us the story of Joseph. It is why the Joseph changed the history, because God prepared him for this special role for this during this long 14 years. And you know what? There's another very interesting story. And again, I want to use the Joseph as example when he present the that ear in our life could be bad or could be good or could be mixed of them. Let's open our book, Genesis 41. 
and read uh, verses 14 till 32. Actually, you know what? No, it will be too long. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> sorry. Can I do your homework? Oh, sorry. Home rest. Uh, how, how to say homework on Shabbat? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just read it. It's f absolutely fascinating story. Let's do it like a home rest, reading the scriptures. Genesis 41, verses 14 till 32. And again, I'll tell you the story. Uh, Pharaoh see the dream. And you remember this dream, right? It was like a seven good cows, and after that it was seven really ugly cows, and ugly cows eat this good and fatty one, right? And the same happened with seven... Uh, Good chiefs and seven bad ones that eat one, the good one. And uh, basically, what dream that Pharaoh saw, it was like a timing. And you know, the Joseph was able to see it and tell exactly what's happening to the Pharaoh. He said, like, okay, seven, first one, it's a bad years. Uh, it's a good years, years of abundance, years when everything is going well. And seven years after that, it will be when it will be really tough. It will be really famine and the bad situation. And you know what? This uh, interpretation of the dream, we need to learn something from Joseph that we can apply in our life. First of all, we know that life could be different, right? It could be good or could be bad. We need to be ready. And the first what I see here, he did not ignore the things what were told, uh, that Pharaoh told to him. He, he did not ignore, and he did not try to comfort the Pharaoh, say like, hey, Pharaoh, it's okay. You will have a seven good year, and after that seven bad years, just don't worry, it's okay. You just go with the floor, right? <laughs> but it's not what he, he did. He tell the truth with love. And as a prophet, it's very important when we have our place in community, stay in community, to tell the people truth. Truth with love. Don't sugarcoat in it. But he didn't stop there. He did say truth. And after that, what he did, he... Oh, there's another thing. Sorry. He did not start to pray to avert the disaster. And you know what? <laughs> Sometimes we, we, we all probably thinking about it. Like, if you know that's a bad weather coming, it's like, Lord, please make a good weather. Or like, if something happening and we see it's looming... Sometimes we start to pray and jump into it too rashly. And you know, it's interesting things. Sometimes we need to pray to change the situation. Sometimes we need to pray to change ourselves to able to handle the situation that God put it in front of us. This was really a revelation for me. I'm just like, huh. There's some stuff that God's sending to us, like a judgment. We know it's coming. And we know to pray against it, it will be foolish. But we need to get ready for this. Ourselves and people around us. It's a very important. And you know what Joseph did? He recognized this time and season and presented to the Pharaoh in a way that he was like astonished and said, like, hey, we cannot find anyone better then Joseph and you will be the man and he becomes like a second uh, person in the kingdom after the Pharaoh. And as a result of this kind of like a disaster, hard time, look what the benefits come out of it. He prepared the environment for Joseph promotion. It was disaster, but Joseph gets promoted, right? Uh, who says uh, in a business, you never waste the good crisis, right? <laughs> That's how they say in the business world. <laughs> never lose a good crisis because this is when the money make, this is when the position, promotion, and all good things come for some and disaster for some, right? Now, it's caused Joseph's brother sincerely repent. You remember how the story started? Who is Joe? But they sincerely repent to the point that they were willing to sacrifice their life for their brother. It's a big achievement. It's actually formed the future nation of Israel. If you think about it, this is how they get to the Egypt, and basically this is where the Pesach coming out, right? <laughs> this is our great holiday. They try to kill us, we win, let's have another holiday, right? <laughs> and if you think, it's prepared the way for Yeshua the Messiah to come into the world 
and being a base for salvation for each and everyone. What a story. What's a fascinating story. And now, it is impossible to talk about time and season and do not mention the name of the wisest man of the earth, known living. It's a Shlomo Melech, King Solomon, right? And let's read this verse uh, 3. Uh, actually, again, let's read verses, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 to 11, but I read just the beginning. It will be your home rest, homework, I mean, whatever. <laughs> um, I need to watch time. To everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven. And if you go into the verse 11, this is the most fascinating verse. He has made everything beautiful in its time. God did everything beautiful in its time. Also, he had put eternity in their heart, except that no one can find out the word that God does from the beginning to the end. You see the confusion in the beginning? It was actually by design. Believe you or not, <laughs> this is what Scripture says. Because God put something in our heart that only he can unfold. And all our smarts or pride or whatever it is, when we try to go through delayed time, belated time, you name it time, like it doesn't work until we get the scripture and try to understand how he built and arranged the world. And, you know, everything beautiful in its time. And uh, actually, if your children and uh, still live with your parents, like, say thank you to your parents. It's really great <laughs> that you have this opportunity. For those who uh, studied part-time when you need to work or if you're already married and stuff, did anyone try this experience? I did. I know it. It's much harder when mom and dad prepare everything. <laughs> you, need to, you don't need to pay rent, pay for food. You just come, grab your book, and enjoy life. Just if you have your parents here, just turn away to them. Say, good job. Thank you very much, mom and dad. <laughs> you did such a fantastic job. <laughs> Treasure this time with your parents. They won't be here forever. It's another thing for us to think. And you know, timing is everything. Like, um, there's some example. Like, uh, imagine when somebody gets married in age 15, 16. Oh, probably it's not legal, but whatever, earliest age. <laughs> I tried to get married when I was five. <laughs> you know, <laughs> come with this news to my parents, and they will not exactly thrill by that. <laughs> Tell me, I need to wait a little bit, Michael, just wait a little bit. <laughs> but you know what? On other extreme, like get married at 60, 70, or 80, it's probably also also great idea. And again, sorry, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. <laughs> Love good at any age, right? Can we say amen for them? <laughs> for them. <laughs> but the fruit, you know, the fruit, when we married. And a good time, there will be good, long-lasting fruit, right? This is what I mean here. <laughs> and let's read another <laughs> good excerpt from uh, Shlomo Melech, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, uh, Shlomo Melech, K uh, King Solomon. Uh, chapter 8, verses 5 to 7. He who kept his commandment will experience nothing harmful. And the wise man heart discern both time and judgment because for every matter there's a time and judgment he again emphasized time and judgment there's a misery of the man increased greatly for does not know what will happen and you know what what's the benefit of being a king solomon have you ever thought about it besides he was like a second king of the united israel really it's only two kings in the history of israel that managed the united kingdom king, da king david his dad and King Solomon, and you know what? I believe King Solomon have a lot of time in his hands. In, in his hands. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not exactly good, depending how we use this time, right? And King Solomon was able to see and observe. When you go through the book of Ecclesiastes, you'll see that often he just see and observe what's happening under the sun. And it was his observation, you know, that 
if person do not know God, he does a lot of mistake. And, and I can apply to myself. I get safe in a pretty late age, around 30, whatever I was back then. And I live my life quite recklessly, I have to admit, <laughs> before then. I wasted a lot of time on all nonsense. I did not appreciate time, do not value it. Did something good, something not exactly good. But when I realized value of time, and I was like, God, can I get it back? Is something, can I just return this time? Or sometimes in our life, we start to appreciate our children, but they grow up already. We want to study, we want to become a doctor or scientist, but we already like advanced, and it may not exactly work out the way we want to. That's why the psalm says, be wise. And you know what? There's a something that kind of like can help us in any stage of our life. And again, I think I want to share some secret formula with you. Can I do it with my close friends <laughs> here? <laughs> and the secret formula, none else like Ecclesiastes 9-11. 9-11, what's that? <laughs> Mark. He give us the secret formula. <clears throat> I return and saw under the sun that the race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong, no bread for the wise, no riches to the man of understanding, no favor to the man of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. You see, there's a two things, time and chance. It means the life, it's not a guest of chess, because there's a chance here. I don't want to say it's gambling either, because there's a time. Time to born, time to die, time to gather the stones, time to throw them out, time to do things, and time to avoid, time to hug, time to avoid from the hug. There's a time for everything, but it's, if it will be just time, it's mean like if someone was born an unprivileged family, this person have no chance, but it's not work like this. There's a chance. And this chance, it's something that gives hope to all of us. Yes, I wasted a lot of time before I know God. And I act foolishly. But God still have chance for me, even when there's no time. And I just, you know, <laughs> like Joseph, imagine Joseph. He wasted 14 years. It, it was his prime. What time he get to the prison? Like 17? And he get out of there, he was like around 30, right? Like 13, 14 years he was in prison. It's a prime time. Can you remember? He can drive Ferrari. He can be his favorite son <laughs> of his dad. He, the world ahead of him was beautiful. But instead, he was bound in a jail in a foreign country. No power, no authority, no hope, no future. But he had this chance. Time was working against him, but he has chance. And you know what? In my life, I remember really, it happens like multiple times. Uh, just I remember I was relatively new in the country. I was looking for a job and interesting opportunities coming up. But it's always like I did wrong timing or something. And I remember vividly that prepared something for me. I have always this hope. And it was one position where they have a very controversial skill set requirements. It was actually four major operating system, different network, like, and it just happens, I don't know why and how, that I have all these four skill sets that they required. And I can prove it with the paperwork or license certificate, whatever it is, and I did the test, went successfully, and it's all aligned. And I believe it wasn't an accident. It just got prepared something for us. And he almost comforted me. He said, like, okay, I know you lost some time in the past. You move a lot, of, but this is your chance. And it's very important for us not to miss this chance in our life. Because this chance may come again, like next train may come, or may not come. It may be the last train. We need to be careful. And, you know, there's a one place in scriptures when God says, you need to live your life, use your time carefully. We need to live our life carefully, 
be careful with time that he gave us. We need to understand the value of time. You know, in Psalm 90, verse 12, David says, So teach us the number of our days, that we may gain the heart of wisdom. You know, our days are numbered. Like when we're children, we don't realize it. Oh, it's a whole life ahead of him. But when you kind of like uh, hit the half of the century, you're like, oh, <laughs> it's not much left. <laughs> I better watch it. <laughs> right? <laughs> People hold it, they, start, they understand what I'm talking about. Right? <laughs> Our days are numbered. I don't want to be depressing on this part. But <laughs> you know, everything we do in life costs us time, right? For instance, if you want to learn how to play violin, it will cost you time. It will cost you money and effort, and blah, 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 but time, it will be most valuable things. If you, want, if you want to become a doctor or software developer or whoever it is, this magic formula, 10,000 hours, you need to spend on something to become good and something, right? And you know what? Other resources, we kind of like can return, reverse. Like if you lose the money, we can make another deal, return the money. If you lose the health, we can kind of like start to eat healthy, exercise, return at least to some degree health. We can restore relationship even in your family. Oh, wow, family is hard. But you can do that. But you can never reverse time. No one ever in history reverse time. Not even Yeshua. When he resurrect people, they come to the state when they were, when they die or something happens to them. But nobody ever was able to go back in time. It was one exception when time was stopped. We, we know the story of Gibeon. And I tried to calculate the cost of this uh, emergency stop. C can you imagine this planetary movement got need to stop at all? Like, what, what's the weight of the Earth? Who's a genius here? Like, <laughs> what's the weight of the sun? What's the speed? I, I believe um, Earth moving, what, 50 kilometers per second? Matthew, you're the smart guy. I know you know. <laughs> Can you imagine to stop this? Try to stop the train, right? And stop the Earth just to make this miracle. <sighs> a lot of cost involved. Like, not sure that our project managers approve this kind of project. <laughs> it's going through the change advisory board. But yeah, it's hard. And it's not really possible except this one exceptional condition. And you know what? And they're coming to the end. I just want to say one parable that you should tell us. Um, and you know what? I, a long time I cannot grasp this parable. It's it looks to me kind of like a little bit strange. And actually, when we have a praise and worship here on New Year's Eve, I kind of like get a glimpse of what's really happening there. And let's read uh, Matthew 25, verses 1 till 13. It's very important. I just want to read it all. How am I doing by time? Oh, um, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went to the meet with the bridegroom. Now, five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Very famous uh, proverb that uh, Yeshua is telling us. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they slumbered and slept. You know what's interesting? It's regardless we wise or not, we're all going to fall asleep. One time or another. This is what Yeshua says. It's not my idea. It happens to all of us, right? And it talks about the believers. They're all waiting for the bridegroom, right? Those who in the world, they do not waiting for the bridegroom. They just in a different planet. And they all fall asleep. But this is where the difference started in verse 6. And at midnight, the cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then the oldest virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answering, saying, Nah, go let by your own. <laughs> It almost looks mean to me, you know, when I read it every time, it's like, no, you get your own, like, you know, kids, like, oh, I gave you this candy, no, you get your own. <laughs> but they're actually not mean, i explain it in a second. <laughs> 
No, lest there should be not enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourself. And when they went to buy, the bridegroom uh, come, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. That's it. End of story. And you know, we do not know why this foolish um, uh, virgin do not have oil. Maybe it was too heavy to carry because you need to have some, you know, these old days when we have this gasoline, this kind of stuff, <laughs> when you never know when you meet the next gas station, right? It's, ha it's hard. Maybe they were not prudent enough, don't think the long term. And you know what? For us, the application would be we need to have the oil represent the Holy Spirit. When we gather together, when we come for the services, when we come in our home group, when we gather together to celebrate um, festivals, Rosh Hashanah, Pesach, Sukkot, Shavuot, when we come to meet with each other during the uh, New Year's Eve celebration, we actually start to praise and worship before 12, and 12, we went like a full steam into the 2024 with praise and worship. It was tremendous anointing here. You know, this is oil. This is what Yeshua is saying here about, just to have this oil. And it's impossible to borrow it from someone else. You cannot borrow the anointing. Like, you cannot ask somebody, oh, teach me how to play piano or violin, right? You need to learn it yourself. This is a skill that nobody else will able ever produce it for you or make it for you. Yes, parents can help their children to some period of time to carry them, but at some point, you know, like eagles, they just push the young eagles off the nest. Hey, it's your time to fly. This is what he's saying about. This is what's happening here. We would love to share, but we cannot because it wouldn't work out. You know, of course it's not convenient to come for prayer meetings. It's super inconvenient to be on every service. It's not convenient to wake up early morning and start to read Bible. It takes time. But this is what we need to do. You know? And what Lord prepared for us in the 2024, we do not know. You know, it just, uh, we have an equal opportunity in life. in life. Have you ever thought about it? Like, in his, um, uh, I'm doing time. in his mercy, Lord, give all of us the same account of time. Like, think about it. Like, you're poor or rich, beautiful, ugly, or whatever it is, there's, <laughs> doesn't matter. We all have the same measure of time. It's like you wake up and your bank kajink 24 hours, next day, woohoo, have fun. <laughs> Seven days a week, 30 days a month, 365 a year. It doesn't matter. And you know what's really interesting? We cannot edit anything to it. We cannot subtract anything from it. We cannot put it on the saving, like, oh, I've, I save it for now, I get some interest. Uh-uh, it doesn't work this way. <laughs> Next day it will be expired and it will be over. And you know what? Uh, I want to share a few things with you that uh, really some practical steps. I know I need to kind of like round up. I really didn't share everything I want to. Sorry. Time. Time. It's like <laughs> we all the subject to time. But I want to leave you with a few practical things. You know, uh, Get close to the Lord. Get close to the Lord. It's, sometimes it looks like it's not easy, but it's possible. You know, it's possible. You know, I, I, I give you like very simple math. Let's say you spend only one hour a day with the Lord, which seems like a lot. But on the grand scheme, you know, it's only like what, 4.1%, whatever, like 10%. Yeah, it's about 4% at all. It's not much. It's a 4% of our life, of our day, which will matter in eternity, and the rest, 96% of it, it will not. And we take it to the grave. No value. Think about it. Only 4% a day when we spend like one hour with the Lord daily. Wow. What's the impact? Second, Spend time with the Lord. Meet him first. And you know, I probably step on somebody's toes here, but you know, and again, I speak for myself. I prefer to meet with the Lord 
in the morning rather than evening. It's good to meet in the morning and in the evening. And I know some of our schedules are absolutely crazy. But did I say something wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I know I step on somebody's toes. <laughs> but you know, someone says a very uh, interesting thing. He say like when we meet with the Lord in the morning, he give us a sword. But when we meet with him in the evening, he give us the bandages. You know? <laughs> It's cute. I find it's very cute. He comforts us. He helps us to recover. He helps us to live our life. But it will be the day will be lived very, very differently, right? By the way, if you're very busy, I, I'm also pretty busy. I, I, I take the headphones and I just sit in the public transit or walk and I just praise and worship. Just don't get too excited. Once it happens to me and the whole train was like... <laughs> <laughs> Some people say, like, you better zip it up. <laughs> it was fun for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that's really important, stay in the Lord. It's nice to start well, but let's finish well as well. And we need, like, support. Just avoid temptation. You remember the King David. He started very well. He did very well. But when the king's going for the war, he decided, ah, I take it easy. I just stand behind, and boom. This is when problem happens. But Shiva come along, and we know the story, right? We are in a battleship. Get ready to the battle time. Don't stay idle. And I thought, like, keep the vision of the word of the Lord in your life. Like a, like a Joseph. He went through the difficult time, but he always, always remember this dream. And he stay faithful to it. And know that God has best plan for you in mind. He's a master of time. He prepared chance, not just time, but also chance for you. And in this time, I want to call musicians to the front. I want that you remember this formula when you go home today. And this is formula time and chance. This is opportunities in life. This is how God worked it out for us, right? I want that you remember that God has plan for you and plan for good, not for evil. How I know that? Let's read it in Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans that I have in mind for you, declares Adonai. Plans for shalom and not for calamity. To give you future and hope. And at this time, let's pray. Just, Lord, we give you thanks. We give you glory, Lord. We bow our heads before your throne of grace, Lord. We give you thanks for this time that you gave us on this planet Earth. We give you thanks for this wisdom and understanding that you gave us through your word, Lord. And we also give you thanks that you not only give us time, but also you give us chance. That even when all time already passed, we know that we still have hope in you. And you will align things. You bring this chance in our lives. And we know that we are not alone, Lord. We know that you exist outside this time and space. And you see us. And you love us. And you're ready to align everything for our good, Lord. Because you are the good God. We worship your name, Lord. We glorify it, Lord. We give you thanks that you open it for us, Lord. At some period of our time, Lord. And we want to pray, Lord, for this 2024, Lord, that it will be amazing here, Lord. Here, when we get closer to you, when we enter in your presence every single day, Lord, that we grow up in your spirit, Lord, that we grow up in a fellowship with you, Lord, that we come to the next level of understanding your will. Hallelujah, Lord, and your scriptures, Lord, your word, Lord. We give you thanks for this opportunity that you open for us, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord. 
we want to glorify your name we want to invite your holy spirit lord holy spirit yeshua come come fill us now give us your revelation how you want us to live this 2024 that it's just unfolded lord we want to humbly ask that it will be your plan your will not mine by your will will be done like yeshua says hallelujah lord may your name be glorified lord hallelujah lord we give you thanks we glorify let's pray let's ask maybe you can turn to somebody just bless him pray hallelujah lord we glorify your name we all can pray together lord we enter into your presence lord we understand we try to understand we're looking to understand your time and seasons in our lives in the lives of our children grandchildren grand grandchildren lord we want to see your will unfolded in our lives lord hallelujah lord we want to enter into your presence when hear your words lord good and faithful servant you do everything right hallelujah lord and all also lord we pray when we screw things up when we do something wrong when we get tempted lord we pray lord that you will forgive us lord that you recover us you give us your grace and mercy lord and you restore us to the place of your glory lord may your name will be glorified in our lives in our families in our communities in our synagogues in our cities in our countries lord in our lives we glorify your name lord may your name will be glorious in the name of yeshua the messiah we pray amen 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 amen
to where I can see heavenly, heavenly glory, the glory of the Lord above. I see Him standing before me. from the outside, or maybe you even consider yourself a believer, but where's the fruit? I read this morning in my own devotions that in uh, Matthew chapter 3, uh, Yochanan said, we've got to bring forth fruit in keeping with repentance. In other words, it's not a... Uh, an intellectual kind of relationship we have, it's real. And repentance breaks open our hearts. So there's a chance today, an opportunity to make sure that we're bringing forth fruit in keeping with repentance. Without repentance, there is no fruit. So Lord, I want to pray in our lives, Lord, that you would break open our hearts not to be casual with time and opportunities that the Lord provides not to be casual and careless but to fear the Lord and if you're here today and you've never received Yeshua or you're not really sure that you, or you're not walking with him. Today is the opportunity right now, right now, to say, yes, Lord, I am not really walking with you. Help me to repent. Help me to repent. And even we as believers, you know, there's things we need to repent of prayerlessness, worldliness. Lord, help us to repent. Help us to take this opportunity today at this time of Kronos, January 6th, in this time of Kairos, the beginning of a new year, in the end of days. Lord, touch us. Bring us to a place of repentance and grant us the fruit of repentance in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you for this. Seal this in, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And really for us, uh, for believers here, let's take this seriously. Does it mean we can't have fun and rejoice? But the times and seasons, Lord, touch us. Help us to draw near to you, as Michael said. To be careful with our time. To meet with you daily. To be at these prayer meetings. To share the good news when we have opportunity. those who need comfort today. Continue to bless, bring healing, health, and well-being 
today in the name of Yeshua. Healing, health, and well-being in the name of Yeshua. Lord, bless this engagement in Barry, Ontario tomorrow. We pray we would impact that city for the Lord and for Israel. Bless this young adults retreat next weekend. Lord, visit us. Visit the service here as Michael Katz shares the word of the Lord next week right here. Bless this new year. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask Jen if you would just say a word of prayer for, for us. Nice and loud.